Aries. Hello, Aries. Happy birthday. This is your birthday month, so it is definitely a solar return for you, and that just brings out sparks flying. It is a very energetic month for you. You're starting your new solar year, so you're going to get the extra oomph that you so deserve. And uh, to top it off, uh, this uh, uh, new solar cycle is now conjunct with Uranus. And Uranus brings the unexpected, okay? So expect the unexpected. Uranus brings in change, and uh, change might be something that you've been waiting for. And in that case, well, you might just see here, right off the bat here, uh, just in the first couple of days of April that things might start flying off the hook for you but then you also have a chance a little bit later in the month when we're going to have a very intense week we'll get back to that too but at least now when you have the sun in the first house it really lifts you up and you'll be radiating outwards towards the public and that is what the first house does and it's also the house that you rule so uh, in this sense it is good you might just be feeling the need to even change something about your appearance first house is all about appearance and presentation and so forth so maybe you'll go and get a totally different look a makeover uh, you know if you've got long hair it might suddenly turn very very short uh, that kind of thing maybe you'll go get a tattoo or something uh, however though uh, as we move through this month as you will see it's going to be a lot of activity we got a busy busy weeks ahead of us and some of it may not all be all that easy to deal with that is the third week here of uh, the month uh, where we have a lot of uh, squares oppositions and so forth going on a uh, little bit testy planets going on there but this is something that's going to also affect not just you personally, but everybody, you know, the whole, whole world will be feeling some of this building tension that has been ongoing. But we'll uh, talk a little bit more about that for you and see which areas of your chart that will be affected. Then we have Venus here just wrapping up its journey through Aquarius where things have been up, up in the air in a happy-go-lucky way. A little bit more, I'd like to say, detached, maybe not as serious as it was here in uh, January and also February when it was uh, retrograding and taking a long journey there through uh, Capricorn. So for you, uh, this last month here in uh, March was more about detaching yourself from it, okay, and finding some joy, that inner child, so you could hang a little looser. But now here, very early on from uh, April 5th, you'll see that Venus is going to pick up a different type of flavor when it moves into Pisces it really likes that area um, Pisces ruled by Neptune see Neptune is that higher octave of Venus so Venus is uh, I won't say the lower but it's more the, the human type love those things that we love and cherish romantically as well as the money that we make so it coming now into uh, your 12th house you will have a first few days here in the 11th, uh, the social house. So you might see here, very end of March and the first few days where you're still socializing. You're out and about, busy, uh, connecting, uh, networking and so forth. But then after the 5th, you'll be moving more into your own shell. Not that you're shutting off or shutting down. It's more like just moving within. So you can listen within. Uh, to those deeper needs of what v Venus wants to give to you so you can feed your spirit. Twelfth house is all about spirit. It's that Neptunian Piscean house and, and Pisces ruling the ocean. Well, you know there's ebb and flow, right? And so in this, uh, you want to be able to listen to the ebb and flow and you'll probably be ebbing more than flowing just so you can recharge your batteries. Now see, when Venus is out in the chart, all rest of the year it's out there busy doing things and picking up the uh, various vibrations from the various signs it moves through uh, but when it's here it's the only time Venus gets to rest okay and recharge so that is important we want a good solid battery so you'll see from next month onwards that you are going to power up in a new way right then we have Mars Mars here currently still in your seventh house for love and relationships and those committed 
relationships, those you work with one-on-one. -on -one. So that could be a partnership or, or it could also be a co-worker that you, you share a lot of time with. In this, you're still working now on trying to find the proper balance uh, between the two of you and how this can work uh, at its highest, uh, more the higher potential of it. And here, uh, Mars is retrograde retrograded from uh, March 1st and it will be here to uh, May 20th. So you have between now and then to really have extra time to interact, extra time to really find that perfect uh, cooperation that not only will behoove you, Mars is your ruler, so yes, you're looking out for yourself too, but it's also, <coughs> excuse me, how you can also infuse this partner, your spouse, uh, or whoever it may be to you, how you can infuse this in a very positive, dynamic way. And I say dynamic because Mars is all about ambition. It's about your goals. It's about the, the physical energy and drive that you have. So you might just be pointing a lot of this energy more so towards your partner at this time to the end of uh, May. We've got Saturn, 8th house. So uh, this is you still figuring out what it is now that you can do financially how can you uh, start saving or putting aside or build uh, a different type of income we're not talking your day-to-day -day income or month to month we're talking more at the long haul actually this area here for you uh, looking at commissions and royalties and money you have with your spouse or other partnerships joint ventures and so forth investments this is the time that you really don't want to close your eyes to it and think, oh, well, later on, because it's here for a reason and it's here looking out for you, how you can really secure something solid. You won't have this chance for another 28 years once we get out of 2014. So make the most out of it. Saturn is your friend, you know, not your enemy. So having a friend of me here is something that is really, really good. And you're still um, transforming your career, your place within the career field. Um, Pluto is asking you, are mm, perhaps some of the people that you work with too powerful? Or perhaps maybe are you coming on a little too strong, too powerful? Because either way can cause or create a conflict. And especially here, third week of the month that we'll get back to. But, but Pluto here, it's wanting you to perform the best you can, but still doing it in a very balanced way where you're grounding your energy and not needing to overpower anything. And, and the flip side of that, you don't want to try to achieve your highest goals by just being a yes person, which doesn't really fit you too well, you know, for the area and description because you are, you, you know pretty much who you are and you are outspoken, you are a fireside. But still though, if you're feeling that you're taking on too much and not verbalizing or haven't been verbalizing um, this, that you're having to sacrifice and give in or flow around too much and bend and flex, well, then that might be storing up here. So pay attention to this early in the month, even if you're listening to this on the March side, make sure that you're, you're monitoring this because this might be uh, something that, that can explode here a third week, okay? But this is something that is needing to take on shape and form so that you can actually excel in your career and you're at a very, very powerful point to be able to break through. And, uh, you know, you've been working on this for several years now already, Aries. So I, I can see how things now are building, 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 climbing, and now nearly cresting, right? So then we have Neptune and Mercury 12th house. That's where Venus is going to be joining up. So Mercury here, just as of late here in March. Well, March was all about listening to your inner thoughts, your hopes, your dreams, that's the 12th house of, you know, the ideal dream. Um, kind of like being on a quest where you've been needing a little extra time, uh, quietude, to figure out what it is you really want. You know, so all those thoughts have been going back and forth. It's like you've been out there fishing and, and it has already connected to that Neptune, passed it up, preparing itself to move over your rising sign, over your ascendance into that first house 
we'll see that take place on, uh, on April 7th. And so then I, I feel if you've been like uh, on the fence of needing to make some major decision, hang on to the 7th. Anytime after that, uh, you'll see that Mercury will be more expressive, more complete, more whole to be able to communicate out to those who need to listen to you uh, that your inner vision is now aligned. So then we also have uh, um, uh, the full moon, new moon. We've got the new moon here now coming up at the end of the month instead of early on in the month. So what we're going to be meeting first is the full moon, and that's April 15th. And for you here, Aries, it's going to be in the second house for values, money, income, also how you see uh, yourself or feel about yourself. It's the house of self-esteem too. So you might just see how things are going to come together for you um, and giving to you this gift of whatever is going to fall in your lap here on the 15th. This full moon should be a good one. You will feel that you're harvesting those very things that you've been working for. And the new moon here in April will be at the very last uh, days of the month. It's on the 29th of April and it will just be on the verge of going into your 8th house into the sign of Scorpio. So it's just then finalizing your 7th house. So the very last days of April, you will see how a lot of energy is being given to your partner, being received from your partner. And then as we come into the 29th, that is where your new moon intention should fall. And that is all about the values that you share with your partner. So just the last couple of days prior to the 29th, pay attention to what's going on with you and your partner. Uh, because in this, that's the feeling, and it's going to be the conclusion of what you're wrapping up that you will take into the eighth house of that new moon. And the intention should all be about how the focus are um, between you and your partner, how you share your resources, uh, how you can improve this area. Remember that Saturn's already there. How can you solidify things and make it more secure for both of you in times to come? Great, great time to put down those uh, intentions. So let's just go quickly to what we have. From top of the month, we already start off with the Sun and, and Jupiter. They're square, meaning that the Sun being you and Jupiter is where it now wants to expand and Jupiter is direct again. Uh, and so Jupiter is wanting to open up something. You might be a little hesitant. You might not be quite there. That could be what's going on in the very last days there of, of March. So you might want to re-listen to March to figure out where you're at at that point. But if you can't make a decision on the first, you'll be more aligned with it. And maybe you should uh, want to wait to the second. Why? Because then you have that Sun-Uranus uh, conjunction. And Uranus can bring about unexpected news. And maybe that's that last piece of the puzzle that you need to actually have a fuller picture so you can feel more at one with what it is you really want to do. So the second is all about um, uh, seeing things in a higher way, um, getting that uh, eureka moment, right? And then on the third, Mercury, see, that's a communication day, coming in, aligning here with the trine to Saturn. Saturn being your own sense of self and mastery. It's also those people around you that uh, sit in a place of power and authority. So it's also your own authority that you're going to be coming out with sharing, uh, I think, what it is that you were harboring there on the first and the second, okay? Now, in this, I'm seeing that you're taking on a challenge because the same day that you're feeling strong and powerful and communicating, the sun at the same time is going to be squaring Pluto in your 10th house of career. So... It might be you just taking a leap of faith and then waiting to see what reactions there's going to be. And we know that Pluto's pretty strong here in that career field. You know, are they going to like it? Are they going to challenge you? What is that feedback going to be? So it's going to give you a little bit of uh, a feel like this. However, whatever is coming here is needing to happen because this communication is putting you yourself on the map of what you feel it is you deserve. On the 5th, we have that Venus moving out of your 12th house over your, uh, no, I'm sorry, out of the 11th house and then over into the 12th house. So then it's going to step back, rest up. On the 12th, we will have uh, 
this very same Venus conjunct Neptune and that's a day to dream, daydream. It's also a very romantic day where you can feed your spirit, heart and soul and I think this is good because you've just gone through a little testing here early in the month and the Sun opposition Mars which is between at the first and the seventh house between you and a partner might have been tested a little bit on the eighth all depending how you see things versus how your partner sees things that's a to-do situation so when the 12th comes and Venus can step back it's like taking a big sigh and a, a sigh of relief and uh, you want to rest up the best you can following week why because yes from the 20th we got a lot of things taking place so on the 14th that little challenge that you had on April 1st is going to come back around okay talk about instant karma things are happening quickly uh, whatever it was that you were a little hesitant about now Mercury will confront this there is a square to Jupiter so it's more like some communication or discussion uh, will come in and it's more like the universe is saying so are you okay with that choice you made early in the month you know so there's going to be a talk about it and then there's it's going to be sparked by a new uh, unexpected situation with Uranus just like the Sun sparked Uranus with conjunction Mercury is coming around doing the very same thing just on the same time that this situation is coming up and I'm seeing when you have Uranus and, and uh, Mercury together it's like you, you process your thought patterns really quick okay it's like lightning uh, it's like full downloads of information so here you might be confronted with a situation where you normally would have needed a little time to think things through but I'm seeing your reaction is immediate okay and the instantaneous sense of knowing and knowledge uh, trust it when it comes in even though it might be a little difficult because Mercury is also squaring Pluto okay so here we go again some communication here's the career feel you being challenged oh my god it's a little shaky because things are happening really quick and you're having to to really do the dance around the situation and also this Mercury is uh, um, opposing your Mars so it's like your drive is over here and your mind is over here you might feel very stretched okay when when body and mind aren't really harmonized but you can only do the best you can I see you are getting a little help because Venus is moving in not exactly quite yet it'll be a couple of days but Venus is moving into a position here with Jupiter that will allow you to trust your gut feeling trust things will be okay you know this is what Venus does this is what Jupiter does <clears throat> when they're harmonized and plus that whole Pluto thing that's been um, challenging you well Venus is coming in to six style Pluto okay so yes you're presented with a situation that you have to take some kind of stance to trust it's going to be okay there's negotiations I see the the the, mm, the negotiations are trying to stabilize something really mm, intensely right now okay it's really trying and you try to to make the best of it here for the 18th to harmonize the best you can why because once we hit the 20th well here the lid is going to fly off the pot um, first we have the Sun ingressing into Taurus uh, meaning that now our essence is going to be a little bit more uh, firm a little bit more bullheaded we're, we're not going to be as flexible as we are when we're in Aries <clears throat> and then comes the major challenges that we were talking about let me just give you a run down a few aspects I don't want to become too technical because uh, there's not all of you understanding that but listen to this uh, Jupiter square Uranus we got Jupiter opposing Pluto we got Uranus squaring Pluto we got Mars squaring Jupiter Mars opposing Uranus and then Mars also squaring off on Pluto and Mercury entering into Taurus too so it's like everybody the whole world is going to be very stubborn not wanting to, to nudge you know nobody's wanting to give in here this goes for you goes for your partner goes for everybody around us it goes for the world's politics as too so I mean if we're looking at the world politics and what's going on in Ukraine and now with Russia <clears throat> maybe US's 
um, play, you know, their role in all of this. It's very intense, but I'm not going to waste time on that. On the world politics, maybe I'll do a second uh, video just on it for those of you interested. Uh, we can go deeper into what that means, but let's look at what it means for you. You have Jupiter here in your um, fourth house. you got Pluto in the tenth house, so that's between home and family. And then the first house is your personality. So this is where your conflict, your tension is going to build up. Um, and then Mars in the seventh house with your partner, so you got this going on. Uh, you want something that you're very clear upon that you need. The tension is going to go between um, uh, your career, home, and family matters. Maybe the family is needing you here and yet you're feeling that you need to, to follow the career or vice versa. Or um, it could also be your partner saying that you should go in one direction where you're feeling that you need to go in this direction. Something there between home, family, your personality, and then the personality, the, the inner self of your partner. For those of you who are single, you don't have a partner, well, I need to talk about those people too. Well, then that will symbolize somebody that you interact with <clears throat> very closely, one-on-one uh, -on -one with, will be the trigger of that Mars for you. So that's pretty much what we have here running through the month. And remember that we have Mars and Saturn retrograde. Uh, Mars is our drive, it's our goals, it's our ambitions, it's the men in our life, uh, and uh, Saturn is the authority that we represent to ourselves. It's authority outside of ourselves and how we need to uh, balance out with them. So those two things are sleeping. We're not really having the greatest support from it. So that means that we have to go within and find that inner strength, and you can do that. So this is pretty much what we have here now for April, and I hope you have a wonderful one. It's, it's exciting. It's definitely not going to be a boring month, and uh, so it will be nice to hear your comments on what's taking place for you here at the latter part of the month. And you might want to come back and re-listen to it just because there is so much going on this month. So Aries, have a wonderful one, and I will see you next month. Go listen to your moon and rising signs. Bye now. Do you follow Karen's Daily Scopes yet? If not, and wonder what they hold, click the sample link below and listen to both the Astroscope and Tarot Scope and get a feel for what you can expect in your love, career, and financial outlook for today.